We have some more updates on some Activision Blizzard games and Xbox expands a very important program to more regions in the world. So Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is just around the corner as you're getting closer and closer to the release date in October. It's going to be continuously building up so much hype with just how big this Call of Duty is going to be. The remake of one of the biggest, if not the biggest Call of Duty, and especially in terms of a cultural impact it had with first person shooters when it came out on the Xbox 360 and the PS3, everybody was playing. It was the only game people were really talking about. And we are getting closer to the release date and we're getting more information about things like a premium paid content pass. And we've also seen actual leaks of the multiplayer screens from LA Rams players who got early access to the game. But firstly, let's go through this. So it says your following reports COD will skip 2023. Activision says premium paid content is coming. So as we know earlier on within the year, we heard that they were not going to be releasing Call of Duty in 2023 in terms of a yearly release. They were gonna take a year off. And this was according to a Bloomberg article where they say here that they claim that they're pushing back the release of the new Treyarch led game that's gonna be coming after the Modern Warfare 2 game. And this is because of the fact that Vanguard failed to meet expectations and leading some executives to believe that they're introducing new versions too rapidly. And a spokesperson from Activision actually spoke to VGC and said, we have an exciting slate of premium and free to play Call of Duty experiences for this year, next year and beyond. Reports of anything otherwise are incorrect. We look forward to sharing more details when the time is right. So the Bloomberg article claiming that they aren't gonna to continue to release Call of Duty on a yearly basis, at least take a year off but the spokesperson kind of pointing towards otherwise because obviously it wasn't officially announced. But now we have this more information here during the Activision Q2 2022 earnings report where they talked about Call of Duty, the ecosystem and all the type of stuff. And they say here, quote, across the Call of Duty ecosystem, the teams are well positioned to support these launches with substantial live operations while also continuing to develop a new premium content planned for 2023 and beyond, which would insinuate that to make up for the fact that they will take a year off from releasing a brand new Call of Duty, they will just be adding some premium content where you can pay and get access to that next year or whenever they want to revitalize the game itself. Now, this is something, if this is true, if this is what they are going to do, I'm all for this. I really do not think they need to be releasing a brand new Call of Duty every single year. And especially with a game like Modern Warfare 2 coming out, I will be absolutely shocked if it doesn't meet expectations, if it doesn't sell well, and it doesn't really bring in the cash for, I guess you would say Xbox at that point, because they are going to be a part of Xbox Game Studios. And I think it's one of those titles, one of those iterations of the game that people are going to want to play for a very long time. So bringing out more content for Modern Warfare 2 instead of just releasing a brand new Call of Duty, I think is a very good idea. Now, that wasn't the only thing we saw about this Call of Duty. We actually saw these leaks here from LA Rams players who obviously were not supposed to be posting these screenshots of the actual in-game UI of Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. But we, we see this here. We see the picture here really looks uh, pretty much similar to Call of Duty 2019, the Modern Warfare one in terms of the UI and the buttons and all that type of stuff. But again, this can all change because it's a very early build of it. I'm assuming that they are playing, but people are in here jumping in and you can see kind of what the aesthetic as to what the game is going to look like when it comes out. That, there's the loading screen. I think this is the one that they were allowed to post, but obviously not everybody followed those rules. In fact, there's even a video here of the LA Rams players playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. So exciting stuff. You, you can even quickly get a glimpse of the gameplay and everything as to what it's going to look like. So if you're excited for Call of Duty, just some more leaks, and this is going to continue to probably happen. More information is going to continuously come out as we move through to October 20th. I'm really excited for this Call of Duty. I know I've said this multiple times in my videos, but I mean, I haven't been that excited about a Call of Duty in a long time. I finally recently finished the Call of Duty Vanguard campaign. It was pretty good. I thought it's probably one of the best looking games that I've ever played. And I had fun playing through it, got into some multiplayer matches. And I had a decent time, but I, I think Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is one of those first person shooters that I'm gonna be spending a ton of time playing. And speaking of Activision Blizzard games, we have some more information here about a game that's apparently been canceled. And it was a Warcraft MMORPG for mobile. Now, this is a game that they say has been in development for about three years, it was called Codename Neptune. And it was a spin off 
of the long running PC title, but set in a different time period. It says here is claimed the game has been in the works for three years with a team of over 100 NetEase developers attached to the project prior to its cancellation. And Blizzard and NetEase, they publish World of Warcraft in China. So that's why I'm assuming they would be working together as I believe the mobile market there is extremely strong and a lot of people play games on their phones. And it's also the same co-creators of Diablo Immortal, which has been a relatively successful mobile game from Blizzard, even with all of the outrage about the microtransactions and all that type of stuff, people spending like thousands and thousands of dollars. It's been pretty crazy. And we've talked about this previously, but Diablo Immortal, they've already made generated over $100 million in lifetime revenue. So all of those people who have been complaining about this, it really isn't going to change anything when it comes to microtransactions within these mobile games. And But to be fair, with Diablo Immortal, from what I understand, is you get to play like 20 plus hours of gameplay before you even have to think about spending a microtransaction. But they say here, Blizzard's title becomes the second fastest mobile game to reach financial milestone behind Pokemon Go, which is huge. So all the people that thought this game was going to absolutely crash and burn because of the way that people had been talking about it with the microtransactions and some of the stuff that we saw from big influencers spending like thousands or tens of thousands or whatever it was just to get a certain gem obviously that is not the case people are enjoying the game the gameplay is good and they're still willing to spend the money on it so you would think that they want to continue down this line on the mobile market and this would have been the next game to do that and it would have been for xbox probably something they were excited about another mobile game to add to their repertoire as we know king within the activision blizzard purchase was a big get for them to cash in on the candy crush and get a bigger hold of the mobile market but that's not going to happen as this warcraft mmorpg from mobile has been cancelled and then finally i just want to quickly mention this because this is something that probably not a lot of people are going to talk about but i think this is a huge thing and it is that microsoft rewards program is expanding to 38 more countries and you can see some of the countries here you have the full list of the countries it's expanding to or the countries that it's currently available in at least right here on their press release for this and microsoft rewards an incredible program another big perk for playing games on xbox where you just play games you get your dailies you get your weeklies and then you're going to be able to redeem those points for many different things gift cards xbox game pass some people i've seen got tickets to a red hot chili peppers concert i saw that in an article and all this type of stuff you get you're getting just for literally doing the hobby you enjoy which is playing video games it's a great program and whenever people talk about it you do see people from certain regions coming in and saying well it's great but it's not there and now that they've expanded out to 38 more regions they're most likely going to be covered so that's a good thing that more people are going to be able to experience this program and experience just how good the microsoft rewards thing is we've even seen playstation now copy this with the playstation stars which they are going to be releasing which is going to be essentially doing the same thing that you get rewards for playing games and you can redeem that for stuff within the playstation store and, and get free games and dlc and probably different things along those lines so it's a great thing that they're expanding it and hey check out this list to see if your country is in there but that's it for me guys let me know your thoughts on call of duty that canceled game from NetEase and from blizzard the mmorpg the warcraft mmorpg and what are your thoughts on the microsoft rewards program expanding to 38 more countries if you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up button if you're new here you liked what you saw consider hitting that subscribe button thank you all for watching thank you for your support i'll catch you in the next video